What's the challenge uh, with Buffalo this week? Uh, outside of the elements and, and, and their home field advantage is, you know, that, that's a tough place to play. I, you know, as a player, I was there for two years, and it's a home field advantage. Uh, you know, Coach McDermott does a good job getting that crowd into it. And, um, you know, so outside of the elements, they got a good unit. They're, they're physical. The returner that they got from the Jets in, in the preseason, he's dynamic. And, um, you know, we got to get him stopped. I think it's supposed to be 70 degrees, so it's actually probably be nice. But typically, how do you go about approaching, you know, those elements? Yeah, you know, it is the, the, the weather, the temperature is supposed to be nice. But I think the, the, the gusts, the 20, 25 mile an hour uh, winds are something to, to uh, be concerning, uh, concerned about. But, um, you know, we just got to handle our business. That's what we got to do. Um, you know, we got the right guys, and we're going to go up there and handle our business. Is there a lot of conversation and, and testing out how that wind is and everything pregame? Um, a little bit, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Nick's played up there a lot. We've we've had great discussions about, um, you know, ha how to handle the elements. But um, until you're up there and you actually feel it, um, at, at that particular, you know, on Sundays, that's the only time you're really going to know what the wind's really about. With regard to the wind and, and elements like that, at the coin flip, when you know all is decided about which end of the field to defend, do you have input in that? If like Nick can go five yards further from one end than the other. Yeah, no question. Yeah, we have those discussions right before right before the coin toss. Um, you know, whether we want to receive, kick off, we want the wind in the fourth quarter, second quarter. Um, do we want the wind to start? You know, if we if we want to kick off, shoot, let's let's see if we can, um, you know, have the wind at our advantage in, in the you know first drive. So uh, a lot of discussions. Yeah, we talk about it. Nick and Nick and I ha have discussions with Coach Callahan, and um, you know, we base our decision a lot to do with you know with weather and stuff like that. What the officials saw with the alignment issue, Brian said he didn't really see it. Yeah, you know, the, the, that particular moment, we, we were confused just like you guys were. Um, you know, we've had discussions with the league and, um, you know, we heard back from them. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not a bay to say, you know, what, what we did or didn't do was right or wrong. But I will say we will continue to align the same way. How have you seen Stoney's confidence progress coming back? It seemed like he was striking the ball really well on Sunday. Are you seeing him kind of be more of himself lately? Yeah, he, he's getting better. He's getting better. I mean, that last one was 75 yards. Um, he's going to continue to get better. Now, now, you know, in that particular phase, we got to play complimentary in that phase. You know, him, him giving our gunners a chance to make plays. Our, our guys inside got to protect and get out in coverage. And um, we're going to continue to get better. And Stoney's getting better. And, you know, we're excited about where he's going. Nick, trying to get this passing offense going, how, you know, we've been, we've been badgering Brian about it, obviously, but it, when, you're tr when you're trying to scheme things up, is, you know, how much of his, you know, he said yesterday, a lot of it's execution. Is it simply coming down to this point of the year, six games in almost, that they guys, guys have to execute? Absolutely. Like, there's, we watched all the passes we watched all the plays as a group, but we sat down, the whole team or the whole offense, and watched all the passes on Monday. And we went and went through them as a group. Line was in there. Everybody, okay, where should, where does everybody think the ball should go here? Where should the protection be? And just so that everybody was on sync here in the same voice at one time. We kind of silo some things out. You know, the line goes in their own corner and things like that. So we thought Monday was kind of a chance for us to, okay, we, whatever happened yesterday, this happened, let's take, a breath let's look at it holistically as a group with the players and say does anybody think the ball should go here okay yes and kind of walked them all through it that way and it was a good chance for us to kind of reset I think a little bit that being said with Ridley obviously he had the frustration mm -hmm. uh, he wants the ball early you guys have all talked about getting the ball early it was yep. two targets I don't think he got his first one till the second qu uh, second quarter yeah well, what's your explanation for that well like the second play of the game he should get the ball Right, it was he had a slant route on the backside. Second play of the game, the ball should go to him. We get fooled by the coverage and the look. We end up throwing the bubble to the right, um, and so, and he sees that. And we know Calvin's frustrated. And everybody's frustrated. Coaches are frustrated. Will's got frustrated. You know, you go and throw the ball for 90 yards. Everybody's going to be frustrated. So, it was good for us to sit down, kind of everybody see how it all looked, how it all fits together, and everybody left feeling pretty good about it or better about it. I, I, you were with Calvin in Jacksonville, and I went back and looked through his game logs, and it seemed like his production was kind of streaky. He would be cold for a couple of games, and then all of a sudden he'd have two or three games where he would you know, have six or seven catches. Yep. What did you guys do to kind of get him on a roll last year, and can you do some of that this year? Some of the things with him, he is so fast that you push – kind of everything kind of comes down the field sometimes for him. You know what I mean? So he's such a vertical threat. Easier, 
kind of the first read and he's deeper down the field and then we end up kind of checking it down and things like that. So maybe some shorter routes for him to where we can have somebody else clear it out, especially against zone and get him in some of those kind of things. You know, screens that we finally got him the reverse again just to get him involved. That was in the third quarter, got him the reverse. So there's ways to guarantee him the ball and I think we need to do a couple more of those. And we sat down and said, okay, there's some screens, some reverses, some, you know, quick game, stuff like that where he's just, Number one, it goes to him, and it really has to. They have to take it away. Well, on Monday, you guys all sit down and watch all the pass plays. Mm -hmm. Was there any disagreement in terms of where the ball should go? Any aha moments? And like, what were <laughs> what were some of the common things you all pointed to and said? Well, this is the reason why it didn't go the way we all agree it should have gone. I think it was good for everyone to see, to hear from one voice, O line included, of, okay, does everyone see this coverage? Do we all see it the same way? And I think that for everybody was the best, that we all sat there, we looked at it. Okay, does, is this a coverage, is this bad scheme or did we just lose on the right tackle or the left tackle or something like that? And this is why the ball didn't come to you, just so that everyone can kind of get the holistic view. So I wouldn't say there's any aha moments. I would say it was more just, okay, we all see that. Yep, we were good, so. It was just kind of, I think, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you know, normally after on Mondays, we meet for 20, 20 minutes-ish as a unit, kind of review the highlights of the game, the lowlights, kind of those kind of things. And we, Brian and Bill and I were just kind of sitting around and said, okay, let's put everybody together. Let's watch them. Let's watch a little more, spend a little more time together as we did. So it was kind of a staff. Uh, we all just said, let's make sure we're all on the same page. Outside of the Miami game, you guys leave a, uh, no points in the fourth quarter this season. I know that... Early on in games, you have your first 10, 15 plays, whatever may be planned out. But what can you do to try and get the offense going late when you need to in these close games? For sure. I think going back to maybe some things that worked in the earlier in the game, you know, not being afraid to recall or reuse some old plays that we've used before could always come into that. Um, some of it's been situational while we haven't scored in the fourth quarter. I mean, if you don't convert on third down, you're not going to. You know, there's been a bunch of three and outs. We have a lot of three and outs in the fourth quarter, which have really, that's going to st stunt your growth anyways. We had the one uh, red zone drive against the Jets where we were down there, and then we've had a couple turnovers. So it's a bunch of different things, but more just if it was a good play before, use it again. If, uh, if Tajay can't go, you anticipate a greater workload for Tony, or you try to incorporate Julius, Joshua, whoever? A mix of everything. Yeah. So obviously Tony's going to be, the guy and he'll take the majority of the reps and then it would be uh getting josh up to speed he's really smart true pro kind of played a lot of football so that's been really nice and him the three of them will kind of handle it all but tony would take the majority and then those other guys will have a role kind of spanned out for them with a handful of plays and then they're ready just to step in if anything skip needed excuse me does that skip by your barn uh most likely most likely as at this stage just Size-wise, special teams role, kind of how many jobs the guy would do at the game. So I think there'd be an ex expectation for uh, Josh to be up. But again, today would be kind of the, as our in-pad day, we'll kind of see where he's at protection-wise, some of those things for him. The high clock is running down so often and, and being a factor. So watch, we, uh, we talked about this on Monday as well. After the play, we take way too long to get back to the huddle. We're walking, we're slow, we substitute a lot. So now we're slow with the subs. So that just, everything keeps getting, all those little things compound, you know, you're two or three seconds late coming back to the huddle. Then we're starting to sub personnel. Then we're getting the right guys in. So there's two or three seconds there. Then we're kind of, we don't really break the huddle with as much urgency as we would like. You know, you see teams, especially in the start of training camp and things like that, really emphasizing that. So we got back to emphasizing that this week. Um, we really, we're subbing from the sideline in practice just to, uh, simulate that so all those two seconds here three seconds here two seconds here all of a sudden, if we had seven more seconds before every play i think we'd feel a lot better so that's kind of the been one of the emphasis of the week is get in and out of the huddle With the offensive line not giving up a sack i know some of that is levis's decision making mm -hmm. as well uh but what can that do for for their connection with levis and the O line well i thought the line clearly played their best game uh, and i think that there was a level of trust from them with the ball came out, Will, we had a plan, we had a really good protection plan, especially on third down, I thought we did a really nice job. Uh, Gus Bradley and them have done a 
really nice job on third and seven plus with a bunch of walk around kind of spinner looks. And we picked those up and the communication was really clean. So going into a road environment, I think it just builds confidence. You know, the Bills have kind of every blitz in America. They've been, that staff's been together forever. So eight years in the defense. So we kind of got to prepare for a lot. And I think the guys feel good about that after having a pass protection performance they had last weekend. Completion and touchdown interception ratio, a number of st t statistical categories. You guys um, are a much better offense when you utilize play action. So mm -hmm. why isn't that something that's uh, being emphasized a little bit more? We tried. You know, we uh, we did a bunch against Green Bay. We had a lot of play action against them. Dolphin game, we kind of just got out of sorts. And then we tried to a couple uh, against, the, against the Colts. Sorry, it's a long day, Thursday. So we tried to get a couple. They gave us a couple looks that would have really hurt the play action protection so we can to a drop back pass and try to get the ball out a little bit so they were able to scheme us up a couple things that was a uh, change up which we didn't expect from them so we're always calling play action we're trying to get to play action sometimes the looks take it away and then when you go in three and out it feels like you uh kind of don't have a ton of ton of at bats but then it got better and we'll keep going as we go if you can stay on the field and convert third downs to the second half i think we'll be able to get more of those off Levis had talked about just weighing the, the deep shots to taking the first and second read. And he was like, well, you know, sometimes you want to take the deep shot, you come off of that, then yep. you get sacked. And then it just, it just seems like there's a lot going on. Totally. How, how do you go about just streamlining that and just make it to where, okay, that's there, take it. If that's not there, go here, et cetera. It's week to week and it's all coverage based. You know, Gus Bradley and the Colts, they play a safety at, 20 yards in the middle of the field and try to not let you take any deep shots. Like that's, they're going to make you take long drives. That's their whole game plan, right? So our two scoring drives were what, 14 plays and 13 plays. Uh, and then we had the short, obviously, touchdown on the uh, interception return. But our two long scoring drives, because that's how Gus Bradley's defense makes you play. Run the football, take completions. So, you know, Will does understand that, but with the coverages and there's too high and there's, they don't let you take deep shots sometimes. So you got to manage the check down. Now, when they are there, if your eyes need to be in the right spot and you got to take them, you got to take them on time, right? You can't be late. Uh, the one interception, you know, he took an extra hitch, kind of held the, the safety, was able to hold it there, and then he ends up throwing a pick. So, you know, they played one hole, and that was a chance to take a shot, and we missed it because we were late. So. Concerned at all that maybe you're telegraphing looks occasionally because – like with Nick's, Nick's played quite a few snaps, has one target. Yep. Traylon only has a handful of targets. You know, whereas the defense might guess it's a run play if those guys are on the field. Yeah, we self-scout all that uh, pretty detailed-wise. But sometimes we try to use it to our advantage, right? So last week we got them both on the field. Uh, tried to then, then we tried to throw a quick pass out the left, and Gus gave us a little bit of a different look than we had seen, than we planned for. So sometimes we're like, okay, we see that we're heavy with those guys run, that kind of thing. We would love to be more balanced and keep those other three guys out there as much as we can. So it's going to be a balance going forward. But uh, yeah, we would like to we'd like to stay with Ridley, Boyd, and uh, Hopkins on the field as much as possible. Being reluctant to up the up the blitzing. Mm -hmm. um, what what do you need to, to do to get your, your edges to, to, to be more effective in the rough? Um, you know, we were selective last week of blitzing, uh, really blitzed a pretty fair share. Um, you know, just that the quarterback got the ball off in time, um, you know, quick to get the ball off, and he drifted in the pocket. And we just unfortunately didn't put the quarterback down. But, you know, we got a lot of hits on the quarterback last week. It's just we gotta we gotta be able to finish once we get around him. Did you get a chance to talk to Jamal? I guess on the way out, and it was just a matter of maybe some other guys playing ahead up, just didn't have. You know, at this, at this point, you know, wish Jamal the best going forward. It just didn't work out here, and um, you know he'll have great success wherever he goes. Why do you think it didn't work out? Uh, it, it, numerous factors, but you know, in terms of that, you know, let the head coach take care of that. Quarterbacks this year that have had just lightning fast time to throw. Um, is it as simple as you just have to play sound on the back end when that's the case? What can the what can the front side guys do when that's the case? Yeah, I mean, if they're getting the ball out of their hands, we have to be sound in coverage. You know, we can't give clean, easy windows. And then if the ball's coming out, you know, up front, you know, you can match the hand, try to get tip balls. Um, but it's going to happen. Um, you know, the quarterbacks now in this league, they're taught 
to get the ball out. And we just got to make the best of our opportunities when we get them. Jarius admitted that Sunday was not his best performance. Mm -hmm. What do you say to a guy like that who's used to being a lockdown corner and has a rough day? Well, everybody has a bad day. And no matter what you do in life, no matter what you do in your profession, is how you get up. So, you know, this week is don't make the mistakes that you, that you made last week. Um, clean up the details, finish every play, and he'll be just fine. I mean, he's still a hell of a corner. I believe in him. This organization believes in him. And just like any anything you do in life, there's going to be ups and downs. There'll be a bad day. And he had, he left some plays on the, on the table last week, but I'm confident he'll make them this week. You saw last week the Josh Downs, you know, using him in motion, mm -hmm. unique motions. This week, the Bills do the same thing with, with Shakur. Yeah. What do you tell your guys? How do you approach that? And, and what does that do? Like, how does that set these guys up for success? Well, it's really all about eye discipline. You know, a couple of plays that, that we gave up last week at the top of the route when the guy was running pivot routes, eyes went in the backfield. So it's really about being ahead of the motion, keeping your eyes on your work, and finish through the play, and understand where your help is. You know, we had a couple of plays where if we used our help, you know, we will be in better position. So it's about just keeping your eyes on your work and finishing the play. And, you know, our guys have the ability to cover uh, guys in a slot. Uh, tell guys, I guess, the back end just about Josh Allen, his ability to keep plays yeah. alive and just staying on your guy. Well, obviously, you know, he, he is his own check down and he can extend plays and let it loose. So you have to be able to plaster in the back end. You have to play into the echo of the whistle. Um, you know, Josh can throw that, that ball a mile if he gets outside of the pocket. So we got to stay connected, we got to stay disciplined, and we got to allow the guys up front to do what they do. What is the message on balancing discipline with some of the penalties we saw last week and yeah. getting the guys to you know, still play aggressively? Um, you know what, last week, if you look at it, you know, we had some penalties, and they were really they were post-snap penalties. It's a big thing when there's pre-snap penalties. If you look at maybe two of the penalties that we had, I mean, you can say they were probably interceptions. Right. Guys were attacking the ball. You know, you look at Jarvis on the sideline. I don't know how you tell him not to move on top of a guy and then don't make the interception. I mean, I thought he was in perfect coverage. So it's a fine line. Obviously, you know, um, you know, the refs going to make their calls or whatever it is. And we got to we got to finish. We got to play through what they uh, what they deem as a foul. But, you know, guys are still going to play aggressive. We're trying to attack the ball. Um, we're trying to take the ball away, and if you look at it, over the last couple of weeks, we've had our ball, our hands on a lot of balls. It's just that, you know, it was certain plays, maybe on Hooker when we got the sack against Miami. That was really an interception. You know, you look at Jarvis on the sideline. I mean, to me, that's a hell of a play. All right, Hook's a bang bang play, but he's going to attack the ball. Um, so we see guys going to get the ball, and I'm not going to slow them down. But they have to be smart in terms of the the fouls, yanking on jerseys and things like that, or roughing the passer. But in order to get the ball, you got to attack it. You mentioned how the guys at the back end have to plaster, but up front, Josh Allen and that pump fake, is that yeah. something that, that you, you know, talk to the guys yeah, about? Yeah, they, sure they, they have to stay on their feet. Um, you got to understand, you know, if his read isn't there and it's not a clear picture, he wants to take off. So we have to balance the rush. We have to keep an edge on the defense, and we got to funnel him to our help. And, um, you know, we'll have a game plan for him. But – like we all know, he's a hell of a quarterback, and he can make things happen. Um, but we we gotta we gotta rally around uh, what he does well and keep him in a well. What do you think, Wes? Uh, I guess by Ray Davis Monday night, and I guess is there some unknown about what their running back situation is gonna look like for you? Yeah, I mean we faced all kinds of running backs. You know they have a very good scheme. You know the O line is is coached extremely well. The tight ends are coached extremely well. Um, we just gotta be where we supposed to be. Uh, fit where we're supposed to fit, play uh, violent edges and knock the, knock the line of scrimmage back. What do you think Arden's game is right now? I think Arden's playing hard. He's playing physical on a daily basis. When you watch him in the run game, he sets the edge. Um, right now, it's just like it's fractions of times in terms of getting there and hitting the quarterback. But I like where he's at. He still, he still can uh, uh, get better. Um, and he's confident in himself, and we're confident in him. And it's just about going out there like like this week. I just told them guys, keep pounding the stone, keep pounding the stone. You don't know when that that when you hit it, the, you know the next time that that stone's gonna break. And one of these games, that stone gonna break, and um, you know he'll reap the rewards from it. 
pretty familiar with Amari Cooper. Yeah. What does he bring to this offense, especially pairing with a guy like Josh Allen? Amari is uh, extremely explosive. Um, he's good at the top of the routes. You know, he can finish with contested balls. Uh, he brings an element of speed, and he's a guy that has a lot of success in his league. So, you know, when he comes in the game, we have to be aware that he's there um, and, and understand that he's there for a reason for them to get the ball to him. So um, we'll have our eye on how they're trying to use him. But he's a very good receiver. Please Cheeto out, with Cheeto out and Jamal moving on, mm -hmm. what kind of options now do you have when you have to go beyond nickel and go like to dime package or even a seven DB package? It's, it's next man up. I mean, we got guys on the rosters and they on the roster for a reason. So, if 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 we go to a dime package, we if we go to any other package, we got guys in the building that can line up and play. That's why they're on the roster. How you all with the the job that Jarvis has done filling in as a starter and is he? Were you expecting him to, to be playing at this level already as a rookie? Uh, I'm very pleased with where he's at. Um, the one thing about it, I said it last week, he's, he plays with tenacity. The thing with him, he's just getting smarter and smarter as a football player. Like some of the plays that he, he leaves on the table is because he just hasn't done it. Um, you know, did I think he would be at this point right now? No. But he's a fast learner. He works at it. He loves football. He loves competing. Every, but everything about the young man, you can't help but, but love. And uh, his personality is, is infectious as well. Do you consider it Cheeto's job when he comes back, no matter what, or could Jarvis earn the job while Cheeto's hurt? Right now, we're playing with the guys that's here. And, and when the time comes, we'll see what happens.